my name is Joanna Lake. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health uh, in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So this is my second year as a postdoc. I'm studying psychotropic medication use um, in adolescents and adults with autism. The poster that I was presenting at this conference was uh, Profiles and Predictors of Polypharmacy in Adolescents and Adults with Autism. We found actually a really large proportion of uh, adolescents and adults in our Ontario sample were taking psychotropic medications. So 57% of them were taking any medications. So that was psychotropic medications and non-psychotropic med medications. And then 52% were taking just psychotropic medications. And then within the psychotropic category, we found that 25% of them were taking two or more psychotropic medications, which is pretty scary because there's a lot of drug interactions when you're taking two um, psychotropic medications at the same time. Um, and from the psychotropic drug class, we found that antipsychotic medications were most commonly prescribed, followed by antidepressants um, and stimulant medications. I think people are nervous of drugs from the same drug class. Like, psychotropic drugs more often than non-psychotropic drugs would be more concerning if you had more than one, but even within um, the psychotropic medications, like two antipsychotic medications at the same time, would be particularly concerning. I think there's just uh, more side effects because antipsychotic medications on their own, just one drug would have a lot of um, side effects, but then two drugs together, and you often wonder why would somebody be prescribed two drugs that are supposed to be doing the same thing. Uh, also sort of a concern. Actually something we're following up, um, uh, we're going to be asking participants the, the dis what was the reason that led you to, to decide to medicate. Um, at this point I think it's likely that it's mental health issues and behavior, behavior challenges that lead people to medicate, but we would really like to know that. We're also looking at sort of parent variables, so whether it's parent distress, parents that maybe don't know as much about the service system, parents who feel really overwhelmed. We're wondering if that also influences the decision to medicate. So we did look at some of those variables, and one thing we found was that parents that were in distress were more likely to be um, to have their child on multiple medications. For polypharmacy, which we defined as two or more psychotropic drugs, it was um, an individual who had been previously admitted for a psychiatric issue, um, somebody who had a history of hurting other people, um, and also somebody who had visited the emergency department before. But we also looked at other variables that weren't predictive of polypharmacy, so things like um, ASD severity, we, as measured by the SCQ, that wasn't um, predictive of polypharmacy, which sort of surprised us. Some of the literature um, actually showed that people who were, had more severe autism were more likely to be on medications, but we didn't find that in our sample. And IQ also wasn't related. So I think we have to be really careful when we're prescribing medications to this population, um, particularly adolescents and adults in, who have autism who are going through a lot of transition in their life, often changing residence, um, going from maybe school to employment, and I think sometimes um, how they're being followed in terms of their care even, when you're on something like multiple medications, you need to be followed really carefully because, as I said, lots of these drugs can have uh, negative consequences. So I think we would really like to put out the the news that this is, you know, a concerning issue and that we need to make sure we're, we're prescribing medications for the right reasons and that they're being monitored really carefully.